Uh, good morning. Thank you very much to the Global Fertility Academy to invite me to share with friends and colleagues some paper from the last ESRA meeting. My topic will be about uh, implantation potential. Uh, there are two posters about the uh, IVA test and the results with IVA tests in this field. And another three uh, papers uh, about the importance of uh, the assisted hatching in vitrified uh, uh, transfers uh, how to, and how to reduce the multiple pregnancy with new policies. This is the best, page, the best paper in this session by Filippo. <laughs> and, and the effect of transferring one or two blastocytes and what happened with the multiple pregnancy rates. Uh, the first paper, the title of the first paper is Embryo Assessment and Selection by Time Lapse Evaluation Using EVA with Transfer at the Cleaver Stage Achieve Similar Clinical Outcomes to Blastocyst uh, Transfers. As uh, you know, the blastocyst transfer allows more precise embryo selection, uh, permitting elective single embryo transfer and minimizing multiple pregnancies. The EVA time lapse that you know that the talk that you heard before, system predicts an embryo potential to achieve the blastocyst stage also by day three. So the objective of this paper was to determine whether cleavage stage transfer using the EVA test to improve embryo selection can achieve comparable clinical outcome to blastocyst stage transfer. It was a prospective study in women who were stratified according to the age, have you see here. Women with two or more embryos on day three elected for fresh embryo transfer uh, and uh, with IVA test or blastocyst transfer without the IVA test. And clinical pregnancy and implantation rates were compared. As you can see in this table, in women uh, less than 37 years old, there was no significant difference in clinical pregnancy rate and implantation rate between the two groups, despite a lower number of eggs and embryos in the EVA group. The same you can see in uh, this group of women between 37 years old and 42 years old. So uh, the conclusion of this uh, first paper is that the three transfer using the IVA test combined with morphology to select embryos resulted in uh, the same implantation rate and clinical pregnancy rate to blastocyst transfers. So um, the clinical uh, implication or the take home message of this paper is that using the IVA test to improve embryo selection can provide a viable option for programs that they have limited resources for performing blastocyst culture. This is, I think, the best, uh, the, the, the most important take home uh, message. The second uh, paper, uh, the title is Euploid Blastocyst Formation and Blastocyst Implantation Rate that is higher for EVA high than for low embryos. This was a multicenter blind study in PCS and no PCS patient. As uh, you know, time lapse imaging parameters have been correlated to an aeroplody risk and have been shown to improve IVF outcomes. The EVA test, you know, it's a, it's a, a technique then you can uh, measure and to uh, 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 the an analyze the embryo, uh, the the morphology, the the um, uh, not uh, uh, not to use manually parameters. So the objective of the study was to evaluate the correlation of IVA test result with euploid blastocyst, but also with implantation rates. Um, this, this study was done with a PCS trophectomer 
trophectoderm biopsy patient from two centers, and uh, no blastocyst implantation was also retro uh, retrospectively assessed in a separate group if in a non-PCS blastocyst transfer. For the PCS patient, blastocyst culture, biopsy, and PCS were performed per standard protocols. And for non-PCS patient, standard morphological grading was used for embryo selection. The time-lapse images were collected using the EVA test, the, the EVA system, but all the EVA results were blinded for the uh, embryologist. As you can see here in this graph, uh, the EVA high embryos had a more uh, euploid blastocyst formation rate than EVA low embryos. And the total, the, the, the average of euploidy was 36%. The implantation rate, the overall implantation rate was 39%, and the EVA high embryos had higher no implantation rate than the EVA low embryos had, uh, what, what, how you see in this uh, graph. The conclusion of this paper that is that a positive correlation was observed between EVA test result and employed blastocyst formation and implantation. The clinical implication of this paper is that EVA test result may reflect the chromosomal integrity of human embryos and have more valuable information to improve embryo selection towards the elective single embryo transfer. Also, the positive correlation between EVA test result and employee blastocyst formation may also provide potential decision support for patients considering PCS biopsies. The, the, the third poster is the title is Ongoing Pregnancy in Vitrified Blastocyst Transfer that is not influenced by the extent of zona pellucida dissection after thawing, but mainly but, uh, by blastocyst re-expansion. As you know, the free thaw process may exacerbate the hardening of the zona pellucida, which could impair successful embryonic hatching and implantation. There are some uh, randomized studies have shown that laser-assisted hatching may improve implantation rate in these cases. But another have some concerns about the rate of the length of the assisted hatching because a small or moderate size of assisted hatching opening may trap the blastocyst in a typical figure of egg shape. So the aim of the study was to uh, evaluate the effect of the uh, length of laser dissection of the zona pellucida and ongoing pregnancy rate in frozen thaw single blastocyst uh, transfers. It was a retrospective uh, study. The population study consisted of patients who underwent a frozen thaw single blastocyst uh, transfers the pre-freezing and post-thawing blastocyst expansion, inner cell mass, and trophectoderm grade were recorded. All the blastocysts were artificial lace collapsed, and after thawing and before embryo transfer, the zona was dissected from uh, different uh, lengths, depending on the space between the trophectoderm and the zona pellucida. And the blastocysts were evaluated in immediately before embryo transfer. As you can see in this table, the pre-freeze and post blastocell expansion predicts ongoing pregnancy, and also the pre-freezing inner cell mass grade was also, uh, uh, was also a significant predicting factor. As a conclusion, the extent of zona pellucida laser dissection after thawing has not influenced on ongoing pregnancy rate 
in frozen thaw blastocyte transfer cycles, and pre-freeze and post-thaw blastocell expansion and pre-freeze inner cell mass grade are the most significant predictors of ongoing pregnancy. The take-home message of this paper could be that blastocysts with higher pre-freeze grades or blastocell expansion and inner cell mass should be given priority when thawing, and blastocyte re-expansion after thawing should be the most important parameter to be taken into consideration to predict a pregnancy. This is a nice paper from Filippo, so you can ask questions to him about the reduction of multiple pregnancy in advanced maternal age population after the implementation of, of an elective single embryo transfer policy coupled with enhanced embryo selection. This is a pre and post intervention study. As you know, multiple pregnancy are at increased risk of premature birth and perinatal death and occur mainly in older patients when multiple, multiple pre-embryos are transferred to improve the chance of pregnancy. A single embryo transfer policy is usually recommended in good prognosis patients, but no general consensus has been reached in the advanced maternal age population. The objective of this uh, paper was to determine whether elective single embryo transfer policy coupled with increased application of blastocyte culture or with PGS is efficient, effective, and safe in this population. This was a, a, a four-year retrospective analysis, includes cycle in the pre and the post-intervention uh, policy. In the post-intervention period, all couples with good quality embryos and less than two previous implantation failures were offered single embryo transfer. They did uh, embryo selection uh, by enhanced by blastocyte culture or PCS, and also the, uh, the cryopreservation cycles, they did an elective single embryo transfer. As you can see here, the efficiency defined as a live birth rate per transfer embryo was higher during the post-intervention period. It has, uh, Filippo said before, the uh, cumulative delivery rate was uh, the same, but the multiple pregnancy rate were lower after the uh, post, in the post-intervention uh, period. The efficacy defined as total delivery rate per oxid retrieval was not affected but, uh, by this intervention that is very important. As a conclusion, the application of an elective single embryo transfer policy combined with enhanced laboratory procedures, including, including systematic application of blastocyst culture, PGS, and vitrification in the advanced maternal age uh, population helps to increase the safety of the procedure by decreasing multiple pregnancy rate. And the most important is to that they maintain the same delivery per oocyte retrieval rate. The, the take home uh, message of this paper is that in the advanced maternal age population, we can and you, we must enhance embryo selection than put that transfer em more embryos, and this allows a reduction in the number of embryo transfer, which increase efficiency uh, and safety of the treatment without affecting the total efficacy. And finally, this uh, paper from Dahan and collaborators about the effect of transferring one or two blastocysts in women 40, 42 years old on pregnancy, clinical pregnancy, live birth, and multiple pregnancy rate. As uh, everybody knows, 
in women less than 30, in, in, in uh, young women, uh, transferring to blastocysts increase the multiple pregnancy rate without increasing the, 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 the pregnancy rate and live birth. There are some uh, studies that demonstrated similar findings in women between 36 and 39, but they are not a study that investigated transferring one or two blastocysts in women over 40 years old. So the objective of this study was to ascertain whether transferring two blastocysts in women more than 40 years old increased the pregnancy, clinical pregnancy, live birth, or multiple pregnancy rate compared with single blastocyst transfers. It was a retrospective study. Uh, they analyzed data from uh, women over 40 uh, years old. Of these cycles, 38 single blastocysts were, was, uh, were single blastocysts, and 88 double blastocyst transfers were performed in the group between 40 and 42 years old. Uh, all the patients were uh, stimulated with standard uh, protocols for the, these ages. And have, how you can see in this table, the live birth was the same in both groups, but the multiple pregnancy rate was very high in the group where two embryos was uh, replaced. As a conclusion of this uh, last paper, Transferring two blastocysts in women aged 40 to 42 years does not improve clinical outcomes and only increase the rate of multiple, multiple births when compared to single blastocyst transfer. The take home message of this paper is that given that pregnancy rate, the, 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 the final comment is that transferring more blastocysts or more embryos two, three or more in this age group could improve, could improve clinical results, but increase, sure, a multiple pregnancy rate and all the risks that you uh, know. In summary, we can say that using the EVA test could improve embryo selection and can provide a viable option for programs with the limited resources for performing blastocyst culture, and for patients with, with higher risk of cycle cancellation, using the IVA test may result in a better outcome. The IVA test also results may reflect the chromosomal integrity of human embryos and have valuable information to improve embryo selection and facilitate the trends towards uh, elective single embryo transfer. The blastocyst with higher pre-freeze grade of blastocell expansion and inner mass should be given priority when thawing, and blastocyst re-expansion after thawing should be the most important parameter to be taken into consideration to predict a pregnancy. Finally, in the advanced maternal age population, Enhanced embryo selection procedures allows a reduction in the number of embryo transfer with increased efficiency and safety of the treatment. And transferring two blastocysts in woman age 40 to 42 years old does not improve clinical outcomes and only increase the rate of multiple births. Thank you very much, and I will be happy to answer the questions.